During the first six months of 2022, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway deployed $57.3 billion into the purchase of equity securities. I believe that purchase of stocks is pretty comfortably a record for Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. If we look back at previous periods of time where they've spent a lot of money buying stocks, $57 billion far outweighs what they've done before. During the financial crisis in 2007, they spent $19 billion. In 2008, they spent $10 billion. And when they were accumulating their massive stake in Apple uh, in financial year 2017, they peaked out at about $20 billion in terms of the purchase of equity securities. And those are all full year numbers. So for Buffett to spend $57 billion in the first six months of the year is pretty unheard of and it's a massive swing in terms of buying stocks in the market. And as I'll cover in quite a bit of detail in this video, quite a substantial portion of that $57 billion has gone into the purchase of two oil stocks, namely Chevron and Occidental Petroleum. Now, if you want to see a curated list put together by yours truly of uh, some of Warren Buffett's most notable stock purchases for the year, including these two oil companies, but also three other companies, uh, check out the first link in the description below. That will take you across to Simply Wall Street and you'll be able to check out some of the metrics on those five companies, some of the reasons that I've outlaid why I think Buffett is investing in those companies. And the first 100 people to use that link will also be able to get a 40% discount on a Simply Wall Street Unlimited subscription. Now in this video I want to cover some of the details behind these recent oil stock purchases from Warren Buffett, uh, some of the long-term trends in terms of supply and demand in the oil market, and also give you my thoughts on the underlying economics of those businesses and why I think Buffett may have swung so large at these companies. So if you enjoy content like this be sure to subscribe, but for now let's get straight into the video. Now firstly let's have a look at some of Warren Buffett's history with Chevron. Now uh, Chevron is a company in which Buffett was in and out in a very small way with less than a 1% position in Berkshire's US equity portfolio in late 2020 and early 2021. But throughout 2022 he's definitely uh, upped the purchasing of Chevron pretty aggressively to where it's now more than a 7% position in the US portfolio for Berkshire. Now in terms of Occidental, the history is a little more complex and uh, Buffett's history with Oxy goes back to 2019 where Occidental Petroleum made an acquisition of another business called Anadarko Petroleum and Buffett actually helped Oxy to finance that acquisition. He purchased $10 billion in Occidental Preferred Stock uh, which was going to pay him about $800 million a year in dividends through a combination of stock and cash and he also purchased warrants on about 83.9 million shares of Occidental. A warrant is similar in many ways to an option, although unlike an option, a warrant is uh, issued directly from the company, in this case Occidental. And those warrants, if exercised, would allow Buffett to purchase those 83.9 million shares at a strike price of $59.62 per share, which would represent about an 8% stake in the company. Throughout 2022, we've seen Buffett continue to purchase Occidental in the open market. He's still yet to exercise those warrants, and with the warrants aside, he's been able to accumulate about a 20% ownership stake in the company, and uh, that has some interesting consequences. It actually means that when Buffett buys stock in Occidental, uh, since he's such a large shareholder, he now has to file a Form 4, and we very quickly see these uh, kind of new additions to Occidental from Buffett um, through these SEC filings and we actually had one as recently as the 28th of September which showed that he now owns 194.3 million shares or about 20 almost 21 percent of the company. The other bit of news here that's notable with Buffett and Occidental is that on the 19th of August, the Federal Energy Regulatory Committee uh, granted Berkshire the right to buy up to 50% of Occidental in the open market. And that follows a filing from Buffett and Berkshire on the 11th of July 2022 where they requested that permission. And they basically argued that um, buying a you know maximum 50% stake in Oxy wouldn't hurt competition or diminish regulatory authority. 
So we're now at a point where Buffett owns over 20% of Occidental. That number gets very close to 30% if he were to exercise the warrants, and he has permission to potentially buy up to 50% of the company in the open market. So Buffett, of course, is known for being a very long-term investor. He's also pretty well known for buying great businesses at a fair price. So what on earth is Buffett doing uh, buying a couple of big oil companies, presumably companies that won't be around in 50 or 100 years from today and uh, companies that can have very volatile earnings as the price of oil moves up and down. Well, I want to get into some of the supply demand dynamics here for oil and there are definitely a lot of potential short term catalysts in terms of things that might impact the price of oil. We've got flow and effects from the Russia Ukraine situation, we've got the depletion of uh, the US Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And we're also starting to see some initial signs of things like uh, kind of energy switching, basically people going from natural gas to oil for, you know, heating purposes in Europe because natural gas prices have gone up substantially over the past 12 months. Now, although I'm sure Buffett is well aware of all of those different dynamics, I really want to focus on the long-term trends for here because Buffett is a long-term investor and that is what's really going to matter for him with his you know, potential success or lack thereof in Chevron and Occidental. Now, of course, uh, oil and fossil fuels have become very much a dirty industry and uh, it's very much in the interests of the world to you know switch away from fossil fuels over the long term but if we look at the hard data demand for oil is actually steadily growing year by year even in 2020 when we had a significant drop in demand for oil because of you know global shutdowns lockdowns you know travel restrictions even that huge kind of event in in the world actually only decreased oil demand about 9% we went from about 99 9.7 million barrels per day of oil demand in 2019 down to about 91 billion barrels of oil per day in 2020. And since then growth in oil demand has returned and it's forecast to steadily keep trucking upwards over the next few years. Could oil demand and oil prices be pushed down over time through innovation and new sustainable technologies? Uh, yes, I think that's a very real possibility and I hope for the sake of the world that we get to that point. But um, just looking at the hard data, there is definitely a long way to go on that front. Now in terms of oil supply, of course oil is a commodity and its price will be dictated by the dynamics of supply and demand. There are some really interesting trends occurring and there's kind of a few moving factors. Now a lot of the supply side for oil is really very political and I don't want to get into the weeds on that too much other than to say there's not a whole lot of political motivation to go out and encourage oil companies to continue to uh, explore for new oil and find more oil and produce more oil. It's very much the opposite direction and that kind of has a lot of downward pressure on supply and potentially you know the flow and effect of that is you know pushing oil prices up at least in the short term. The other part that comes into it pretty significantly is simply investors having been burned through previous commodities cycles. If we look back at something as simple as the Occidental Petroleum stock chart from the early 2000s, we'll see that Oxy was ripping upwards and um, something similar was happening in a lot of oil companies, uh, not only in the US but in many parts of the world through that time. And the core thing that oil investors were really looking for at the time was growth. Um, you know, it was all about growth and exploration and finding more oil. And after oil peaked in 2007, a lot of investors were really burned. And if you listen to basically any investor call from an oil company these days, there's very few of them talking about new oil exploration and looking to grow capacity. Almost all of them are instead focused on things like share repurchases and dividends. So you have this really interesting dynamic where oil demand does continue to steadily truck upwards over time and there's politics and capital allocation um, potentially pushing the supply of oil down or at the very least slowing it from growing as fast as it might have done historically. Now Buffett has shared thoughts on oil investing a, a few times over the years. Something he said in 2020 was when you buy into a huge oil production company, how it works out is going to depend on the price of oil to a great extent. 
It's not going to be your geological home runs or super mistakes or anything like that. It's an investment that depends on the price of oil. So what does the future look like for the price of oil? Well, I'm not going to sit here and act like I can predict that. Um, in the short term, nobody knows. And uh, in the short term, there is really no floor or ceiling for what commodity prices can do. And oil is absolutely no exception. But in the long term, there are a few things that I think are worth sharing. Now, there's some really good research I kind of stumbled across from uh, a guy called Gary Turner, who is the CEO of Trove Research. And he published a really interesting study on basically returns on equity and returns on invested capital in renewables and in oil companies and how that changes at different oil prices. Now, the US is the largest producer of oil in the world and the returns on equity and returns on invested capital that the companies and then you know of course the returns that investors can generate are going to be heavily dependent on the price of oil as Warren Buffett has just told us and uh, this research from uh, Gary Turner suggests that if oil were to stabilize in the 40 to 60 dollar barrel range then the typical large US oil company would only earn about a 4% return on capital. And within that $40 to $60 range, those returns on investor capital actually change quite dramatically. Uh, at $60 oil, the average large US oil and gas company would earn about an 8% return on invested capital. And at $40 oil, they would earn about a 1.3% return on invested capital. So all of that is to say that if oil were to get below, say, $40 to $60 a barrel in the very long term, the US basically doesn't have a sustainable oil industry. The returns will be too anemic to warrant you know, new investment. So that sort of puts potentially a longer term floor on oil prices. And you would think that over time, the cost of production for oil will tend to go up. Uh, we have that just through general inflation and asset prices and labor prices going up. But we also have that through sort of the physical realities of finding oil. You know, all the easy oil has has largely been sucked out of the ground already and oil companies are having to get sort of increasingly heroic and go further distances and so on to find new oil. Now in terms of a potential ceiling price or upper limit for where oil could go to, there's a pretty famous saying in commodity businesses that the cure to high prices is high prices and that basically means that as commodity prices go up and companies start earning very high sort of super normal returns on capital that tends to encourage more people to produce that particular commodity and earn those super high returns on capital and that of course pushes prices back down again uh, if it gets too extreme you have sort of the marginal producers of a particular commodity kind of pull back and restrain production and that's how you have these ebbs and flows in commodity prices over time. But there are a few things that are potentially different this time, and I know that is the most dangerous phrase in investing, but you have this um, very kind of um, political situation where producing more oil is very, very frowned upon, and you also have an investor base that is really demanding a capital return through dividends or buybacks having been burnt in a recent cycle. Add to that the fact, again, that oil will without doubt get harder to find over time. I really don't know what the ceiling to oil prices could be. Now, to sum up Buffett's investment case in Occidental and Chevron, I actually think it's very simple. There's a lot of moving parts here, but I think there are really two core drivers behind this investment from Buffett. Firstly, I think he probably has a view that long-term oil prices will be higher and they'll be higher for longer than most investors probably anticipate. In many ways, there is this structural mismatch between oil supply and oil demand. And if those two things that I just said turn out to be correct, that can really only mean one thing for oil prices, which is that they have to go up. The second thing that I think Buffett likes is that there is very little capital expenditure for growth. He's getting a lot of his cash back very quickly through dividends and buybacks, particularly when oil prices are as high as they have been recently. Oil's come back a little bit in the past month, but you know, if we look at just the sheer amount of cash flow that companies like Occidental have been producing, it's been pretty insane. I mean, Oxy produced $4.2 billion of free cash flow in their second quarter this year, which is 
is a 6% free cash flow yield just from that one quarter's cash flow. Uh, they also retired $4.8 billion in debt and purchased back $1.1 billion of stock. So I think Buffett really likes that he's getting a lot of capital back right out of the gate when he's buying into these companies. And to an extent, the second thing, the you know not a lot of capex for growth, kind of reinforces the first point of oil prices being high. Longer term, if it turns out to be correct that oil prices do stay high, I think the prices that Buffett has paid for Oxy and Chevron today will look very low and he'll just get enormous cash flows coming off of these companies. And if oil prices go down and it turns out that new supply does come online, and maybe demand doesn't grow as fast as it is anticipated to grow, then I think um, Buffett will still own companies that had a lot of benefits from from kind of this short-term rise in commodity prices we've seen this year. They've been able to pay a lot of debt down, they've retired a huge number of shares, and they're also paying out big cash dividends to shareholders. If I've learned anything about Buffett over time, it's that he doesn't necessarily bet big when he thinks the upside is big, he bets big when he thinks the downside is muted. And I think the combination of higher oil prices for longer, if Buffett is correct on that, and capital returns could really provide that kind of asymmetric upside downside bet here for Buffett. Now, of course, if you're interested in investing in any company, not just an oil company like Occidental or Chevron, be sure to do your own work and do your own research to come to your own conclusions on these companies. But I think what's going on in the oil space is definitely um, an area that has some really interesting dynamics. And uh, it's definitely an area where there's very volatile stocks. And we know that if you can figure out what a business is worth and you have you know, good conviction around that, yet the stock price is very volatile upwards and downwards, that can definitely create opportunity. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and some of uh, my thoughts on why Buffett might be buying into Chevron or Occidental in a big way. If you did, be sure to subscribe so that you can see future content as soon as I upload it here on the channel. But that's it for me for this one and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.